Pena refill. So I would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for the invitation to this very interesting con uh, conference and Stephen for the introduction to the session. So during this conference, we have heard um, a lot of interesting results on the anatomy and connectivity of subcortical regions. And in this talk, I would like to discuss how this knowledge of subcortical circuits can help us to constrain the computational models of their function. And uh, I will focus on dopamine and present a computational framework for modeling dopamine function, both in learning about rewards and also planning actions to get these rewards. So in the first part of the talk, I will review a dopamine function. I will uh, start with few words on reward prediction error theory of dopamine, which Stephen has already uh, introduced, and then present a um, few pieces of data which are um, inconsistent with, this with the basic form of this theory. In particular, I will talk about diversity of dopaminergic neurons, the, the role of dopamine in habit formation and in movements. And then in the second part of the talk, I would like to uh, suggest a framework which extends reinforcement learning um, theory of dopamine to also describe its role in action planning. And I will refer to it as DOPACT. Um, and I will discuss how this framework can explain um, these various pieces of data and other experimental observations. So the reinforcement learning theory assumes that the animals should learn about the reward when they are unable to predict it. So the key signal which should trigger the learning about the reward is the reward prediction error, which is typically denoted by delta and defined as a difference between reward and expected reward. So in the equation which Stephen uh, presented, this reward actually included two terms. So it's both the immediate reward and reward which you expect in the future. And uh, as Stephen has uh, pointed out, it has been proposed that this reward prediction error is encoded in the activity of dopaminergic neurons. And uh, reinforcement learning theory predicts that this reward prediction error should trigger learning. And indeed, it has been observed that dopaminergic activity can trigger synaptic plasticity uh, in the striatum. And um, the reinforcement learning theory was one of the biggest successes of computational neuroscience and uh, many of these predictions have been confirmed uh, by um, many spectacular uh, papers. Uh, however, there are still some observations which uh, are inconsistent or seem inconsistent with this theory. So although computational neuroscientists would like to think about dopamine as uh, just uh, projecting a, or transmitting a single signal, the reward prediction error throughout the brain, there is actually a diversity of dopaminergic neurons. So dopaminergic neurons are located uh, mostly in two nuclei, in the ventral tegmental area or VTA, and in substantia nigra pars compacta uh, or SNC. And dopaminergic neurons located in different locations um, in this nuclei are connected with different parts of the striatum. And um, as indicated here by colors, different parts of the striatum receive input from different cortical regions. And by the way, I would like to kind of point out that uh, this figure is highly suitable to be presented in this workshop uh, because it shows the um, parts of the brain with the size reflecting their importance. Um, and uh, so this beautiful figure from um, Susan Haber um, also indicates that different dopaminergic neurons um, are connected with different systems. So they be belong to different functional systems. Um, and I will follow the color convention in this figure thro throughout my talk and denote the neurons in more um, reward related areas in red or warm colors and neurons in more motor uh, areas in cold colors. So 
So given the diversity of the connections of this dopaminergic neurons, it's perhaps not surprising that there's also diversity of the responses. So the activity of uh, dopaminergic neurons uh, encoding reward prediction error, which Stephen uh, showed, was recorded in um, VTA. Uh, by contrast, it has been known for a long time that dopaminergic neurons in SNC respond to movement. And a particularly nice study, which directly compared the responses of dopaminergic neurons in these two areas was performed by Hove and Dombeck. So in their experiment, a mice was head fixed above a wheel on which it could freely run. And a pipe with reward was uh, placed in front of the mice. And critically in this experiment, the Rewards were delivered randomly, irrespectively from animal movements. So the authors could, in the, um, could compare the dependence of um, activity of dopaminergic neurons independently on reward and movements. And what they observed is that the neurons in VTA responded to reward as expected from standard reinforcement learning theory. By contrast, the dopaminergic neurons in SNC did not respond to reward, but responded to movements. So this results poses a question. If you look at, the, at this results from a point of view of reinforcement learning, why should neurons encoding prediction errors as it's thought about dopaminergic neurons, why should these neurons respond to movements? So the diversity of dopaminergic neurons is also reflected in this triatom uh, which is the main target of dopaminergic projections. So in the stratum, there's a functional gradient, which is thought to go from ventral through dorsomedial to dorsolateral stratum. And if you record neural activity, the uh, neurons um, respond in a gradient from reward to movements as you progress from ventral to dorsolateral stratum. And the effects of lesions to different parts of the striatum also follow this functional gradient. So lesions to ventral striatum generally reduce movements of hungry rats near foot, which should suggest that this region is uh, important for detecting that reward is available and should be acquired. The lesions to this uh, intermediate dorsal medial striatum uh, cause impairments in tasks where animals have to uh, learn that particular action like lever pressing is important for getting the reward. So this uh, those medial uh, regions in the middle of the spectrum seems to be important for learning associations between rewards and movements. And finally, the lesions to the those lateral stratum produce impairments in habit formation. So following this observation that lesions to uh, those lateral stratum impair habit formations, and another study looked at the effects of lesions of the corresponding uh, dopaminergic neurons in SNC. So let me tell you first how the habit formation is studied in animals. So typically a rat is placed to a box with a lever and pressing a lever results in reward. And in an environment like this, rats can learn uh, to press lever to get the reward. Then the animals are fed to satiety. So they no longer desire this reward. And then finally, when you place um, this rat, which is no longer hungry to the box, the rat will not press this lever so much. So in this situation, the behavior of the animal is goal directed because it only presses the lever when it really desires its goal, namely the action. Interestingly, if the animals are trained for a very long time, then even after the evaluation, they press the lever, even though they no longer desire the reward. And this happens because they have learned that pressing the lever in this uh, box is just the right thing to do in this, uh, in this state. Now, after SNC lesion, the animals are perhaps slightly slower in learning to press levers for reward, but eventually they're able to uh, learn these tasks equally well as controls. But importantly, um, after devaluation, they, they no longer um, 
press this lever as much as the controls. So this suggests that uh, SNC plays um, a critical role in habit formation. So how these uh, results are related with the um, standard um, reinforcement learning theory? So it has been proposed how habit formation can be described by reinforcement learning um, in a model where it's assumed that habit formation is driven by reward prediction error. But the dopaminergic neurons driving habit formation seems to be located in SNC. And as I showed before, the SNC neurons mainly respond to movement rather than rewards. So this poses a question, how can habit formation be, be driven by dopaminergic neurons which actually respond to movements? And the third challenge of uh, reinforcement learning active, uh, theory um, is to describe the role of dopamine in uh, action planning. And this role is evident from difficulties in um, initiation of voluntary movements seen in Parkinson's disease. And this dopamine role in energizing movements is likely to be underlined by the fact that dopamine seems to increase the excitability of striatal neurons. So this dopamine role in movement you know, poses a question which has been puzzling for me um, for several years, namely, why should neurons encoding reward prediction error be important for movements? So let me um, now present how these questions could be addressed by a modeling framework, uh, which extends reinforcement learning to include the role of dopamine in action. So following the data which I reviewed earlier, I will assume that different dopaminergic neurons belong to different functional systems or components. So let me give an overview of different components in this, uh, in this model. So the first component is the evaluation system. And the goal of the evaluation system is to, to compute value V of the reward which should be acquired in a given situation. And the reward which should be acquired depends on both reward which is available in the current state, but also on animals' levels of reserves such as food and water. So for example, if the animal is not hungry, the desired reward calculated by the evaluation system will be zero, even if the reward is available. And the second component uh, in the framework is the actor. And the goal of the actor is to select an action to get the reward set by the evaluation system. And in this talk, I will um, focus on the description of the actor. So I will, for simplicity, assume that the valuation system is able to somehow calculate this desired reward, but the, this DOPAC framework at the moment still doesn't describe how this computation can be performed. So I will first describe the computations the actor performs in this model. Then I will briefly mention how this computation is performed and then focus on the implementation of this computation in the um, circuit. So the actor selects actions by inference in a probabilistic model, uh, which describes the relationship between states, which I will denote by S, so state of the environments, actions, which I will denote by A, and rewards R. So following um, convention, which is used in some reinforcement learning papers, I will denote by capital R, total reward, which includes both the immediate reward which I would denote by small r, and the reward expected in the future, which I denote by v. So in this DOPAC framework, there are actually two systems within the actor which learn different parts of this, of this probabilistic model, which are shown in orange and blue. So the system shown in orange learns how the rewards depends on actions performed in a particular state. And, and I will refer to it as goal-directed because uh, thanks to this uh, knowledge of this relationship, the system can infer which actions should be made to get this particular reward. Additionally, there's a second system which just learns which actions should be generally executed in a given state. And I will refer to this uh, system learning this probability uh, distribution as the habit system because it suggests actions without considering reward available. And um, 
So during action planning, the total reward is equal to this uh, reward expected in the future, which is computed by the valuation system. And then actor chooses the action that maximizes the uh, probability of action given the reward in a given state. So it, it tries to find the action, which is the best action given the reward available and the current state. And such posterior probability of action can be calculated from the base theorem. And according to the base theorem, this posterior probability is equal to the product of the likelihood of the reward given action, which I'm suggesting is provided by this goal-directed system, and a prior, which I'm suggesting is provided by the habit system. So um, in this, um, according to this equation, both systems select action together. So why can one can act uh, one can ask, you know, why do we include this habit system if we already have a goal directed system, which uh, already is able to uh, know which action to select to get the reward? Well, so there may be some uncertainty in the goal directed system. For example, due to the uncertainty uh, in the computation of the valuation system or due to the uncertainty of the parameters of the goal directed system. And if goal directed system is uncertain, then according to Bayesian philosophy, um, one could make a more accurate decision by also biasing choices by the prior probability. And in this case, this prior is provided by the habit system, which provides a kind of useful prior because it learns what are general actions which are useful to select in a given situation. So let me kind of describe how these different systems contribute to decision making in a typical task. So at the beginning of the training, at initial trials, the valuation system would evaluate the current state and calculate the uh, desired reward. And then the goal-directed system will compute the action to get this reward. Then as the training progresses, the habit system learns to mimic the choices made by the goal-directed system. And then uh, the actions are jointly uh, suggested by the habit and goal-directed system, and their contribution depends on their level of certainty, or in other words, on the level of precision um, um, of their beliefs. So the, for the sake of time, I will not uh, describe how this um, Bayesian inference is performed in the model. I will just uh, briefly summarize it for those interested in modeling. So calculating this posterior probability of action directly from the base theorem would be quite difficult for biological system because it would involve some multiplications, divisions, integrations. But there's a, a simpler way of doing this using a technique called free energy minimization. So this technique allows you uh, to find the action which maximizes this probability. So that basically the best action to perform given um, the reward and uh, state. And this free energy minimization can give you a differential equation describing the evolution of the variable describing action, which has a property that it converges to the value of action which maximizes this posterior probability. So this equation converges to the value of the best action. And magically, this equation has a characteristic form which makes it easy to be translated into a network of neuron-like nodes. And this kind of networks which minimize free energy are known as predictive coding networks, uh, and they include nodes which encode prediction errors. Furthermore, the, in this predictive coding networks, the parameters of this probabilistic model are encoded in synaptic weights. And can be learned with local plasticity, which is driven by prediction error. And so far, these predictive coding models have been mostly um, used to describe the information processing in the cortex. However, I would like to claim that they are also very powerful for subcortical regions. And in fact, the network which uh, infers the action given uh, the reward has surprising similarity to the anatomy of the reward circuit. So in the DOPACT framework, different systems can be are mapped on different loops in this striato-dopaminergic circuit. And the systems communicate through a spiral of connections, which was identified by Susan Haber. 
So Susan Haber observed that dopaminergic neuron in a particular loop project to the stratal neuron in the, in the corresponding loop, while stratal neurons project back to the same loop and to the dopaminergic neurons in the next loop. So, um, and furthermore, they propose that these projections to the next loop go via interneurons. So these projections are effectively excitatory because the stratal neurons inhibit themselves. So I'm redrawing now this circuit here in the simplified form. And in this diagram, arrows denote excitatory projections and lines ending with circles denote inhibitory projections. So as typically assumed in reinforcement learning models, I will also assume that the description of the current state is provided by the cortical regions to the striatum. And then the parameters of these probabilities distributions learned by the actor are encoded in the corticostriatal weights. The action is computed both jointly um, by inputs from the stratal neurons in the goal-directed and habit system. So we know that both of this, um, the stratal neurons project to the GABAergic output nuclei, which then project to the thalamus, so this motor command can be transmitted further. And for completeness to be able to simulate this whole uh, network, uh, I also included a valuation system, which is just described by um, a standard reinforcement learning model, learning value of particular state. Now, in this network, dopaminergic neurons also encode reward prediction, sorry, encode prediction errors. But critically here, different dopaminergic neurons or in different systems encode different prediction errors, which corresponds to errors made by their corresponding systems. So uh, both valuation and goal-directed systems, they try to predict reward. So these two uh, neurons will calculate reward prediction errors, which will be slightly different. By contrast, the habit system is not trying to predict the rewards, it's trying to predict the action. So uh, this prediction error in the habit system will describe how the chosen action differs from habitual actions. So these dopaminergic neurons will respond to non-habitual movements. So according to this DOPAC framework, the dopaminergic neurons in SNC respond to movements be, um, because they actually do encode the prediction error. But this is not reward prediction error, but the action prediction error, namely describing how the chosen action differs from the habitual action. And then these prediction errors drive learning in the corresponding systems. Uh, and again, this. Uh, in the evaluation and goal-directed system, they will drive reinforcement learning. By contrast, in the habit system, they will drive learning which action to perform in a given state. So in particular, this, um, in this model, this movement-responsive dopaminergic neurons drive habit formation. So how this happens? So at the in initial stages of task acquisition, the actions are mainly selected through input from this goal-directed system. And then this action will trigger prediction error in the habit system because action has been performed while the habit system hasn't been learned yet, so it didn't make any prediction. So there's this prediction error, and this prediction error will trigger plasticity in the habit system. So the habit system can make this action in the future or predict this action in the future. And in this way, the habit system learns to mimic the goal-directed system. And during the action planning, the valuation system computes the reward available. And then this um, reward available is sent to the dopaminergic neurons in the goal-directed system. And dopaminergic neurons in the goal-directed system play also a role in action planning. And this double role of dopamine in goal-directed system in the model in both learning and action planning is inspired by a uh, interesting theory called active inference, which has been proposed by Carl Friston. So this theory assumes that the brain aims to reduce the discrepancy between observed stimuli and expectation. But critically, it proposes that there are two ways of uh, achieving this aim. So first is the perception and learning. So you can update your expectations to match the world. 
Uh, but there's also a second way to reduce this surprise, namely through action. So you change the world to match your expectations. And this sounds very bizarre, but actually um, Carl proposed that the brain maintains expectations which are necessary for survival. So for example, the, uh, the food reserves should be on a certain level. And when these expectations are not ful fulfilled, then through action, um, the brain um, seeks the way to reduce this expectation. So in this DOPAC framework, um, the dopaminergic neurons in the goal-directed system also have um, um, this double role and they encode reward prediction errors, which are minimized both during learning and planning, which gives uh, rise to the role of dopamine in both of these processes. So let me just kind of describe how this role arises. So in the goal-directed system, the dopamine encodes the reward prediction error, which is, this, is kind of similar to what Stephen showed you. So we have the difference between the reward, which includes both obtained and available reward, and the expected reward. But here, the expectation of the reward is only computed on the basis of the current action plan. So the expectation of the reward only arises from forming a plan to achieve this reward. So for example, when you find the action you, which can get the reward, only then you can reduce the prediction error to zero. So to give the intuition how the system operates, uh, let, me, let us kind of imagine the pandemic is over and this conference physically takes place in Amsterdam. So imagine that after a day full of talks, you walk through Amsterdam and you see this beautiful pastisserie. So you are in the state in front of pastisserie and you perform action walk in. And then you see this delicious strobe waffles. And this sight will clearly trigger your dopaminergic response. Yes. So according to this DOPAC framework, this reward prediction error will arise in your goal-directed system because you have uh, you, you, the valuation system tells you that the reward is available, but you haven't planned yet any actions to get this reward. So you don't have any expectation of the reward yet. Now, this reward prediction error is used in two ways. So first, it will um, drive the process of action planning um, because it increases the excitability of the stratum neurons. And then once you form formulate the action plan, uh, you, you form the expectation and then this reward prediction error can decrease. So, so uh, this theory you know, uh, tries to answer the question why it's useful for neurons encoding reward prediction errors to be important in movement planning. Namely, it suggests that dopamine provides a crucial feedback on whether the current motor plan is good enough to get the available reward. And it will trigger the process of action planning until you find the action plan which can get the reward. And secondly, this uh, prediction error plays a role in learning. So it can reinforce the association between the state and the action. So if you are in Amsterdam next time, you can visit this pastisserie as well. Maybe I would just kind of advertise that, uh, you know, uh, this model has been simulated and you can find in variety of paradigms and you can find the details in the paper. So in summary, um, I suggested that dopaminergic neurons do not all behave in the same way, but are part of different functional systems. And uh, they all calculate the calculate predictions errors, but these predictions errors calculated by different dopaminergic neurons are different because they calculate errors in the predictions of their corresponding systems. So for valuation system, it's the uh, reward prediction error. For the goal-directed system, it's the difference between the reward and the reward expected from making a particular action. While for the habit system, it's the difference between chosen action and habitual response. And uh, these prediction errors drive reinforcement learning in um, um, this more reward-related parts of the stratum and habit formation in this more motor parts of the stratum. So, and we, when our brain interacts with the external world, the reward prediction error in the goal-directed system plays role in both learning and action planning. So during learning, it encodes the uh, the dopamine encodes the difference between reward obtained and reward expected from the taken action, and it can be used to update our expectation 
while during action planning, this reward prediction error is equal to the difference between reward available and reward expectant from my current model plan. And it drives the action planning until this uh, reward prediction error decreases. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.